Hey, what's going on? It's Arava here, and welcome back to a brand new video today, all about talking about the 2021 F1 concept designs they've unveiled today. Uh, they've got three different concepts of what F1 in the future might look like. Very interesting, striking looking designs, as you can clearly see right now on shows. I'm going to show them on screen. Um, kind of, you know, wallpaper stuff, really. Kind of, you know, the stuff that artist impressions always, when they think about F1 in the future, uh, the cars look like that. But if they can actually make this a reality, that's going to be pretty, pretty nutty. But as always, Ways. There's always some debate about if they actually look good. You know, what are you guys thinking? Let me know in the comments below. But we're going to try and dissect, you know, what the reasonings are for the FIA. And uh, more specifically, Ross Braun has kind of made a little bit of a development team there in Liberty Media. And this kind of team of engineers and kind of, you know, just boffins, basically, to try and understand this year's cars and the, the current crop of cars. See what's wrong with them, basically. That doesn't allow such close racing. And then trying to rectify that as we go forward into 2021. So we're going to try and dissect the kind of article that F1 have released and kind of talk through what Ross Braun has mentioned in kind of a meeting they did, I think like two uh, two days ago or yesterday, about these uh, about these cars and then uh, kind of ask you guys' opinions about it. So reading through this article then, F1 is working on design for the future car that will increase the chances of great fights all the way down the field every single year. High on the agenda then is a solution to allow cars to follow each other more easily, which in turn should increase opportunities to overtake. Of course, we all well know the issue the current cars have is that dirty air when you're behind cars, not only in traffic, but also just following, you know, Mercedes following a Ferrari or Ferrari following a Mercedes, vice versa, Red Bull following any other car, the top cars fighting each other or the midfields fighting each other or just getting through traffic. It is always such a tough thing to get through and make overtakes happen unless you have a significant delta time over the other car. By that, I mean, if you have better tires, much fresher tires and you're going, you know, at least one second faster or, you know, five tenths faster than some cars, depends on the circuit obviously some circuits need you to be a good second faster to actually make an overtake happen sometimes uh, that delta time is so so key that you just can't make an overtake simply by actually keeping up with someone and making a nice little pop down the inside because you don't actually have the downforce to get the power down out of the corner to get the traction to actually make that dive then subsequently on the next straight or go side by side and actually find the grip on the exit or mid corner to make a move kind of unlike we have in the F1 video games we all play uh, on the channel obviously um you know the, the dirty air isn't as apparent as it is in real life and that's a great thing you guys have seen so many so many times how great is the racing on the f1 video games but in real life we just don't get anything like that because the car simply can't follow and make moves like that um because they don't have the downforce available because it all gets chucked away when they're fighting each other but at the same time ross also mentions that there's also a desire to have cars that look so good kids want to have posters of them on their walls of course f1 cars at the moment they look pretty good obviously they got a lot uh, better looking over the recent years. Debatable, obviously, the halo adds into the uh, least aesthetic part of the car, but oh, apart from that, the rest of the cars look much better than they did maybe a couple of years back, and they've been getting better and better looking ever since, but they want to go that further step forward, kind of have that, you know, like Ross mentions, and like we've mentioned in terms of, you know, when you think of supercars and hypercars, that kind of, you know, boyhood poster, kind of, you put it on your wall as a little kid, and it's, it's so sick to look at, and that's what Ross and you know, F1 wants to go to they want F1 cars that just look beautiful. Ross continues on and goes a bit more detail then, quote, when we started looking at the 2021 car, the primary objective was to enable the cars to race well together. What we established early on in our research is the cars we have now are very bad in following each other. Once the cars get within a car, few cars length of each other, they lose 50% of their downforce. That's quite a lot, 50%. That's huge. Um, that's a substantial amount of performance loss, so we set about understanding why that was and how we can improve it. I'm pleased to say that we're about at 80% now. So, so by that he means, okay, this year's cars and the current crop of cars lose 50% of their downforce when they're following each other. Why that is, is a simple case of you got that turbulent and dirty air coming off the back of the car. Now, the front of the car is so, so key to this kind of set of regulations. The, the front wings no more are just downforce uh, producing devices. They are out and out flow control devices moving the air around the front tire, moving to the inside of the front tire to get underneath the car to then the barge wood area, which obviously in the last two years, the barge wood area has become so much more important for development and trying to move air around that car underneath or to the side around the side pods. And so that front wing is so, so important. And if you have turbulent hot air, which is coming at the car, it's not that kind of free stream straight air coming to the front wing.
thing. It's all wish-washy, it's all mixed up. You can already see without even doing the maths that it's going to be a horrid time for that front wing to actually work that air and try and move it around the front tyres. You've also got inherently with open wheel racing cars and racing cars in general, but obviously open wheel racing ones are even more of a difficulty. You know, front tyres have a lot of turbulent air coming off the tyre itself. You've got a lot of air being obviously rotated around as the tyre goes through and that turbulent air also needs to get cleaned up and right now that's the job of the front wing. The front wing tries to kind of subtly clean up the air or straighten out as much as it can and induce mixing on the edge of the tyre face when it when it, going rearward and tries to clean it up as it goes down or downstream towards the side pod and the diffuser. So that's a lot of work for the front wing to do and if you're adding in turbulent air it's not going to be great. So the research shows 50% downforce loss. That's a lot and now they're improving it to only 20% loss where by 80% he means we're keeping 80% of the downforce the new concepts they're working on should try and only lose 20% downforce that's a huge huge margin you're you're reducing you're reducing that downforce loss by more than 50% of the 50% you're losing that's a, that's a huge step forward but they're still working and trying to improve it even more by the sounds of it because he keeps it quite open ended that they're still trying to work on it because how crazy would it be if they got it to 90% even you know then the racing would really come alive in theory because then the drivers have no excuse apart from themselves of trying to keep up with each other obviously maybe other complications come into it obviously there, there's there's always going to be caveats to oh then you look at the downforce loss maybe at the rear end of the car or you know the side pods now the side pod areas come too complicated so there's always a you know balance fine balance but what they're doing at the moment the research they're doing is actually concrete stuff to try and reduce this downforce loss so those concepts we talked about right at the start of the video on show now once again so concept number one shows the halo cockpit protection device being much more integrated and subsequently more aesthetically pleasing so um i don't exactly know how i feel about that because from certain Certain angles, yes, that new Halo style is looking a lot more sleeker, especially the way the pylon attaches to the chassis. I'm not sure about the indent there. Um, I think Kai on Twitter kind of uh, kind of compared it to a Pringle chip, which is correct. It looks like a Pringle chip, so I'm not too sure about that. Lewis Hamilton even said that he thought the leaked concept looked dope as fuck. His words, not mine. But then he said, oh, from the front, not so good anymore once F1 release some front facing picture shots so maybe a little bit of work to do on the front face there for, for the reigning world champion to, to like it as such but we move on to concept two then so that first concept looks pretty pretty nice obviously they haven't got too aggressive it's kind of an evolution of this year's cars maybe with more striking rear end the side pod's a bit more aggressive and also you've got a few little winglets on the top of the chassis and then that halo is the biggest part really the wing is quite simple we move on to concept two so they're evolving as we go on through the concepts basically basically, as what they can do with the car, attaching little bits here and there. The second concept is more refined and stylistically more aggressive. You can clearly see that very, very aggressive. And uh, to, to be fair, so far, I, I'm liking concept two more than one. That looks very, very nice and aggressive. As the aerodynamicist was evolving the car, the graphic designer was taking where they were and trying to capture it at each stage. Concept two is a bit more extreme. One of the things you'll see is bigger wheels. We're committed to 18-inch wheels for the future. They look better, and then also there's a lot of technical reasons why we want them. Uh, I agree that 18 inch wheels do look really, really nice, you know, so especially on certain angles and especially on this, co on this concept, especially 18 inch rims look really dope. And obviously bigger wheels in a, in a hole gives you more mechanical grip. You have more surface air on the tires and also it's going to improve in terms of also the way maybe the suspension is working with the tires in terms of the height, maybe also that helps aerodynamically where the suspension is housed as well then. So they're more, they're, they're going more, you know, extreme with concept number two. You can actually see small little things like you know you've got the fairing on the suspension so the fairing on the suspension will try and help aerodynamically the air coming through the actual suspension arms and maybe try and guide them but you have a kind of more stylistic kind of spec fairing maybe that every car has to run you've got winglets at the rear face of the tire which is going to help because obviously that rear end that gap between the rear wing and the rear tire that little slot there has been so so important this year the years gone by to try and create a vacuum seal to make the diffuser work a lot better they have winglets there ahead of the rear tire like they had previously in 08 previous they had winglets there for a reason because aerodynamically it's so much better to be able to guide the air the way they want it to the diffuser to the rear end or around 
on the rear tire or in a way they want to hit the end plate of the rear wing they can do that a lot better with the winglets there and they've also got these little uh, kind of winglets coming off the brake ducts here in a way where so if these are the wheels you've got the brakes then and the fairings come out like that so Directly, that is trying to solve the issue of front tire turbulence. So like I mentioned before, you have a lot of turbulent air coming off the front tire and that's going to affect how the air goes downstream if you just allow this turbulent air to go right to the end of the car, to the sidebar. And that's the reason why at the moment we have these complicated wings that control the air around and try and generate mixing on the rear end of the tire to try and clean up that air. But if you simply have two winglets delicately coming off and just chucking the air sideways then, you don't have that issue anymore. You don't need as complicated of a front wing then to control that air because that turbulent air now is just being chucked sideways and that's obviously not going to affect the car behind. Obviously in a corner, if you're trying to go side by side maybe, there's a, a thought that maybe that terminal air you're chucking it sideways so is it going to come straight outward so if you're trying to go side by side maybe there's some more terminal air coming through from those little winglets but obviously that's part of the research they've said they got it to 20 percent downforce loss Maybe that's the 20% now they need to look at as how can we best dissipate this turbulent air. But crucially though, when you're behind the car directly, not side by side, behind the car, there's going to be less of an issue then because you're going to have less of an effect basically. Because there might be the same amount of turbulent air, but now the way your car that's following deals with it is much better. because You don't need to rely on, uh, on controlling the flow around those front tyres. The third concept is the most current one, but there'll be a lot of interesting ideas that have come out of the research that haven't uh, fully yet been brought to life by the artist. However, in this concept, you can see the first signs of devices to control the way airflow comes off the wheel. So that was already in concept two, actually, but he's now kind of mentioning the kind of more on show, maybe, in concept three. The tires and the wheels are the dirtiest area of the car, like I mentioned. They cause huge disruption in the airflow. We are starting to look at devices that can stabilize the flow as it comes off the wheel and is maturing as we go along. So... That kind of indicates, okay, maybe not just also chucking the turbine air sideways, but maybe uh, a device that's attached to every single car that helps try and negate the turbine air. So try and smooth it out, but it's for every team. So, you know, right now, every team is it, it's all for themselves, basically. They have to try and design a front wing that controls the air. But if you have a spec part of the car, just in this point of the car, where it helps the air flow off and tries to sort out that turbine air for every car, then that kind of negates that issue and then you let the teams go right you can design whatever front wing you want you can do it however you want but you all have this thing that's going to help dissipate the turbulent air off the front tires. So those are the three concepts. Interestingly enough, obviously, it's not all just about the front end. They've also, you know, changed the rear wing a little bit, more aggressive. The way the side pod kind of swoops in for that Coke bottle shape is very, very aggressive. And the way, you know, just they've shaped the actual entire car is just a bit more... I don't know, I'm kind of going all Richard Hammond almost, but kind of just, you know, just a bit more striking, a bit more kind of just there as a kind of poster car, like they say. So what's next, as they're going to say? There's another year of further research and development to come with a target of having a framework in place by the end of 2019. That will still allow for time for a period of refinement. It's hoped that the final design will be encouraging to teams involving to stay in F1 while encouraging new teams to join and boosting the grid. We want to create... Okay, that's a bit of a caveat that I want to say because uh, I think the tenure and the time for new teams to submit and enter F1 in 2021 is already elapsed so there won't be any new teams joining in 2021 but hopefully in the future they're hoping when other manufacturers actually see these cars in person and the concepts are actually not concepts anymore they're working maybe that kind of you know tries to persuade other teams to join but we want to create an environment where there's a queue of people wanting to join F1 Braun says the encouraging thing when Force India ran into trouble was that that had a number of suitors that wanted to buy it. If you remember Manor, a few years previously, couldn't sell the team. So I think the confidence in F1 has since increased. We want to definitely uh, have a queue of people that want to come into F1. That's a good point by Ross Braun, actually. Yeah, Manor couldn't find a buyer, whereas Force India did buy, uh, did find a buyer. Obviously, there is a difference between Manor and Force India. Force India, you know you're going to get a definite point scorer. Manor, not so much. That was a bit of a gamble and maybe money down the drain for them, uh, for a potential buyer. So there is a bit of a difference there, uh, Braun, but, you know, still... Uh, I, I will accept his point that it has definitely increased maybe in terms of the amount of people that are looking in. You know, how many rumors have we had of Aston Martin, Porsche, Audi, you know, um, you know who else? Michelin as a, as a tire manufacturer, maybe looking into things. We've just had more buzz of different brands and companies wanting to enter the sport as of late. So even though they're just rumors... 
that still rumors that we weren't getting, um, you know, three, four years ago. So that's been my little news piece then showing you guys these concepts and kind of informing you guys of the world of Formula One because I know not all of you might not have Twitter or Instagram or whatever, might not follow F1 on these social media. So always there are going to be people that miss it. And also just trying to get a discussion going and maybe also try and explain a little bit why they're doing certain things because obviously they're trying to, you know, explain in a very simple kind of manner. I want to try and add a bit more detail by showing you a few little diagrams here and there about what we mean about why the cars are the way they are right now and what they're trying to get it to maybe. Uh, but let me know in the comments below what you guys make of it. Any part of it, you know, the looks aesthetically, the halo, um, the front wing, these kind of new brake duct kind of winglets or any kind of, you know, thing to do with the car aesthetically or even aerodynamically or technical wise. Obviously, some of you guys might be more interested in the looks rather than the actual physics of it and why they're doing that. Uh, vice versa, there might be more people really interested in the physics part and less about the looks. Percy, for me, like I said on Twitter, they, they all look pretty damn good as long as they're going to make the cars lighter, hopefully. So try and save weight somewhere because this current cars are just way too heavy for my liking. A lot of drivers' likings as well, you know. So many times drivers have mentioned how cumbersome these cars are on low speed. So as long as they make them lighter and they do take the emphasis off front wing flow control, the better. Because having taken a look at that kind of interaction myself whilst I was doing research for my university degree... It it's very, very apparent. It's way too, it's way too important at the moment. And you're never going to get close racing if you have a device like that on the front. That's so integral, but also gets changed so much by dirty air from the very car you're trying to overtake. So, uh, you know, they're, they're going a right route about it. And obviously the research and the numbers don't lie there. 50% to 20% downforce loss. That's a huge, huge gain in, in theory. Obviously, it's just numbers and CFD. But hopefully they can actually put it into play. And so in two years time, we could get some very, very cool, but also actually, actually practical cars. But so if you're new around here, do get subscribe for weekly Formula 1 content. If you did enjoy the video and found it interesting and informative, then hit that like button. Let me know in the comments below, like I said, about anything you thought there about the concept cars, concept one, two. Actually, that's a, that's a straight up question. Which one do you prefer? Concept one, two or three? Obviously, it's a bit of a working progress. They went from one to two to three. But interesting to see, maybe some of you guys prefer the simpler designs of one or two, maybe. Because three looks pretty crazy, but I kind of like that in a way as well. But for me personally, I want to say concept two. I think two is a nice middle ground between crazy rocket ship and what we have kind of now with simple wings and just like a little bit of a flow control device uh, at the brakes. Um, two for me, yeah. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.